of course, the runner that everyone has been talking about coming into this 5,000 final is Abby D'Agostino of Dartmouth, who is trying to cap off her collegiate career by becoming only the third woman to win this event three straight years. And this is a this is a very easy point pace. Again, no one wants to take the lead, and the wind has picked up a little bit here, and they don't want to necessarily fight that. So. The pace turns in to be tactical in this large field. D'Agostino's hip number is number nine. Emma Bates of Boise State with hip number one, also a threat. It's picked up just a little bit now, the pace. Uh, one minute and 20 seconds. Wow. For the first uh, lap, just a little slow for what these athletes can do. So the 5K final underway. This event will be followed by the final two events of the day, the 4x400 relays. It is Butler's Mara Olson out in front, Marielle Hall of Texas second, Carrie Verdon of Colorado third, D'Agostino is holding in fourth. And while this race is just getting started, let's head down to Jill Montgomery with a very special guest. Sam, thank you very much. I'm with University of Oregon's Associate Athletic Director, Vin Lanana. Now, you were just awarded the NCAA Championships this year, plus the next seven years. What were the key components in getting that? Well, this crowd, the crowd, the community, and we provide about the best, best experience, our hope, to provide the best experience for as many student athletes and institutions as we possibly can. What will you focus on going into those next seven years? We'll focus on really blowing out the event. I mean, we expect to, we want to grow the crowd to 20,000. And um, if we can, it will be the greatest crowds ever for the NCAA. Well, they are pretty great crowds today. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Again, you can just feel the history when you come through the gates here and you sit in the stands. It is a facility that even if you're a visiting coach and you're not too happy about running on Oregon's home track, when you put that aside, you realize there's no better place to run these championships than here in Eugene, Oregon. Women's 5,000 final underway, 10 laps to go. And Amara Olson of Butler still leading the way. The University of Texas is Marielle Hall is just behind her. D'Agostino, who is trying to win her third straight 5K from Dartmouth is back right now in sixth place. And they're coming up to the 1200 meter mark. And they're gonna pass that in about four minutes right on the nose. So the pace is somewhere right around five minutes and 24 seconds or so per mile. It has picked up. Notice how they stretched out a bit. The athletes here. D'Agostino, a wonderful story. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the competition here. But this is the only event she is running this year, or this year, meaning with this NCAA championships. She did not double. She has done that in the past. She has seven NCAA titles to her credit, does the woman from Dartmouth. It's been an amazing ride for her after the problems she had in high school. While we've got nine laps to go, let's go back to you, Larry, for an update on the men's triple jump. And speaking of laps, we have got eight to go here in this women's 5K final. Mara Olson of Butler has been among the top two the entire time. Let me touch base on, uh, on D'Agostino, who is the overwhelming favorite here. Uh, but she was a five minute mi miler in high school as a sophomore, showing lots of promise. Then got injured both her junior year and her senior year. A series of coaching changes complicated things. She went to Musconomic Regional High School in Topsfield, Mass. She was not heavily recruited. Um, she fell in love with the Dartmouth campus on a visit. They talked to her about her past and her history. They invited her to run on the team. And she just fell in love with the school, she said. And Mark Coogan, a former Olympian himself in the marathon for the United States, became her coach. And they bonded quickly and well. He upped her mileage. She responded incredibly well. And within two years, she had run 
15 minutes and 40 seconds and dropped her time down 43 seconds in this event, the 5K. And she missed making the U.S. Olympic team by 19 one hundredths of a second as a college sophomore. Wow. When would we expect to see her make a move, Larry? Well, she's got good speed. We're still early in the race, relatively speaking. We have six laps to go, Sam. She's monitoring things well. The pace is steady and solid. It is Cuff of Stanford out in front now. Hall of Texas is in second. Cuff of Stan Stanford is a big challenge for D'Agostino, actually. She's run the number three all-time collegiate time. Did that in May. Cuff out in front at the moment. Cuff a magnificent high school career, setting all kinds of records and, and just a terrific, terrific talent. And she has picked up right where she left off getting out of high school and has had just a just a superb three years at Stanford. That last lap in 72.6 seconds, the lap before it, 72.6, and the pressure is on. Notice the field spreading out here. They dropped it down from an 80-second lap before that. Cuff still with the lead. Mario Halls had a superb career for the University of Texas as well. She won the 1500 this year at the Big 12 Outdoor Championships. And time for our pick you up moment of the championships brought to you by Enterprise Rent a Car. We're going to take a look back at the men's and women's 100 and how we call them. And here in the women's 5K, Cuff, Hall, and D'Agostino are the lead group in that order. Cuff in first, Hall in second, D'Agostino in third. And they covered the first two full miles, just over 3,200 meters, in 10 minutes and 22 seconds, 5.11 per mile for these ladies. And they now have about three and a half laps left of this race. And the championship, I really believe, will be decided by these three women up there, despite the fact there's a little less than uh, four laps to go. Well, Texas still on the leaderboard in the women's competition, could use the points from Hall. Mario Hall has a personal best of 15-19 to 3K. Abby D'Agostino and, and uh, Ashley Cuff. Ashley and Cuff have run 15-11 for lifetime best. That works out to a 4.53 mile pace for 3.1 miles. Three laps to go. Cuff, Hall, and D'Agostino still the lead group. And they have separated themselves from the field. There is the second pack, Emma Bates, the 10,000 meter champion is leading Dominique Scott from Arkansas. Bates, of course, uh, someone we felt like could be a challenge to D'Agostino, but she's leading that, as you said, that lead, or that second group. And that's Waverly Near from Columbia University, trying to score points for her school. Near has moved up into sixth place. That Scott gap. of Arkansas is in fifth. That gap, Sam, probably 70 meters or so right now. Bates trying to lead a charge to get closer. Couple of laps to go. D'Agostino opening up just a little bit third place. She's now two or three steps back. And there are two laps to go. Cuff of Stanford still in front as the third fastest time all time in this race. But yet it is D'Agostino that is considered the favorite going for her third straight 5,000 title in a row. I do think uh, this is a guess that she's got more sprint speed than does Cuff. Paul, I've seen him run a couple of times. I don't know what she, she could do really on a, on a raw sprint against D'Agostino who has good speed. Interesting to note that at the Big 12, Hall worked on her speed by winning the mile. And interesting to note that Hall won the Stanford Invitational, which of course Cuff would have been part of. 
And the ladies are trucking here. They are pushing the pace, and we come up to one lap to go when they finish this straightaway. D'Agostino and her bid on the U.S. Olympic team made a big, bold run with a lap to go. She usually has something in the tank, but the ladies are stepping it up. Look at Hall press. Hall has taken the lead away from Cup. D'Agostino in third. The final lap being run. Three women in the lead group. And the second group led by Bates. It looks like it's down to two women right now. Not, not fully sure yet, but I'm surprised that D'Agostino has let them get away here. She's got something left. It oh. is Hall and Cuff leading the way. D'Agostino falling back. Marielle Hall, the University of Texas, trying to pull off the upset here in the women's 5,000. Look at Hall fly. Hall has really opened up. Can Cuff catch her down the back stretch? I don't think so. It is Hall trying to sprint to the finish. Mariel Hall of the University of Texas has just won the women's 5,000. Cuff will finish second and D'Agostino third. What Emma Bates of Boise State will finish fourth. What an outstanding career for Abby D'Agostino. Not to dwell on it, but she's won seven NCAA titles in her career. Gets third here. Congratulations to Mario Hall for a terrific run and a superb time. 15 minutes, 35. 0.11 seconds for her, her last it, lap right in 63 seconds. Around, baby, I know you're tired. We're just gonna try to do this quick. And confirmation, it is Mariel Hall, the University of Texas, shocking this field by winning the event, and she's with Jill. You sat behind Hall the whole entire, uh, Mariel, the, you sat behind her the whole entire race. How hard is that to make your move and be tactical to make sure that you win? Yeah, I mean, all year I've been working on being a little bit more patient. I, I always like being on people's toes, probably a little too much, especially for a 5K, but I just didn't want to deviate from what I know I can do, and that's go out hard, slower, and just compete and do my best, and I know I'll like the outcome if I do that. Big team points. Yeah. What did your coach tell you today going into this meet? Um, it wasn't today. It's been all year, you know. Um, I'm a part of this team. I need to contribute because I because I'm I have the ability to do so. So it was just going here and do what we've been doing all year, which is fight and you know grind it out until the end. Congratulations. Thank you.